Amen. This morning, uh, I'm going to read from the book of John, chapter 4, verse 35. John, chapter 4, verse 35. Thank God for His Word. Amen. Amen. Our beloved said he feeds us his word in due season. Amen. 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 God's word is quick and powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. Um, and it will not return unto him void. But it must accomplish that for which he sent him. I'm going to read from the book of John chapter 4 verse 35 this morning. Amen. It says, you know the same... Four months between planting and harvest. But I say, wake up and look around. The fields are already ripe for harvest. Amen. 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 Jesus says to the disciples, lift up your eyes. Another translation says, Lift up your eyes and look around. The fields are already ripe for harvest. Amen. Hallelujah. This morning we're going to speak uh, for a few minutes on a topic titled, Lift up your eyes. Yes. Amen. Lift up your eyes. Amen. 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 Let's bow our heads as we pray. Father, we thank you for your word. And we thank you for the power that is in your word. Thank you that your word comes unto us today. And we pray, Lord, let your word have its perfect way. Amen. Let your word do all that you have ordained it to do. Amen. Let your glory come down. Amen. Let all the blessings be ours. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Have you ever promised a child that you would give him or her something? And especially, it turns out to be something that that child really loves. Maybe you promise a piece of candy, their favorite candy, or you promise a trip to their favorite playground. I can pretty much guarantee you that that child will not let you rest until you have fulfilled your promise to that child. Does anyone have that kind of experience? You've promised the child something and before an hour even passes, they're already nagging at you. When can I get my candy? When can I? Are we going there? Are we going there? Are we going there? Or is it Friday yet? Or is it Saturday yet? Because you said we're going somewhere on Friday or Saturday. Amen. 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 You have promised that child something and that child will not let you go until you fulfill it. What you have done for that child is you have painted a vision. And that child has caught a hold of the vision. Hallelujah. And when Jesus says to the disciples, Lift up your eyes and look on the fields. Amen. He's not only offering a vision of the need for the harvest. Amen. Jesus is teaching the disciples about the principle of vision. Amen. Lift up your eyes, he says. Lift up your eyes, he declares. Just like that child has received a vision and constantly remembers the vision, lifts up their eyes as it were, Come on. Jesus is also challenging the disciples, lift up your eyes. Amen. Well, amen. Amen. Earlier this week, this word, that phrase dropped in my spirit. And as the week continued, God continued to remind and continued to emphasize that to me. And I perceive that God is saying to somebody today, Amen. lift up your eyes. Amen. <clears throat> Come on, say, I will lift up my eyes. I will lift, lift up my eyes. eyes. Lift up your eyes. Amen. 
When we consider the phrase, lift up your eyes, the primary thought that we see is that God wants you to see what God sees. Amen. 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 Lift up your eyes and see what I see. Lift up your eyes from what is around you and behold what I can see. Lift up your eyes to the reality of what I see in heaven. Over and over again in the Bible we hear that phrase, lift up your eyes. Mm -hmm. God says to Abraham in Genesis chapter 13 verse 14 to 15, And the Lord said unto Abraham, after that the Lord was separated from him, Lift up now the eyes, mm -hmm. Amen. and look from the place where thou art northward, and southward, and eastward, and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. Amen. Amen. Praise God. God painted a vision for Abraham. Lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes. Again, in the, in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 40 verse 26, God says through the prophet, lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all these? He who brings out the starry host one by one and calls forth each of them by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. Mm. Isaiah 49 verse 18. Lift up your eyes and look around. Amen. All your sons gather and come to you. As surely as I live, declares the Lord. You will wear them all as ornaments. Amen. You will put them on like a bride. I declare to somebody as surely as God lives. Your sons and your daughters. You will wear them like ornaments. Amen. You will put them on like a bride. Amen. This morning I want you to catch a hold of the vision. The psalmist says in Psalm 121 verse 1, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence come, from whence cometh my help? Yes, Lord. My help comes from the Lord. Yes, Lord. The maker of heaven and earth. Amen. Lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes. When your eyes are downcast, it can represent a situation of sadness or shame or humiliation. It can represent hope that is lost or fear. But when your eyes are lifted up, it, ex it represents an expectant spirit. Amen. 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 It expects a hopeful spirit. Yes, it expects a confident spirit. Lift up your eyes, oh ye people. God is saying to us, Victory Court, lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes, church. Lift up your eyes, man or woman. Lift up your eyes to the reality of God and His majesty in your life. Lift up your eyes and don't focus on the mundane. Don't focus on the false things that the enemy says. Focus on the real and glorious destiny that God has for you. Amen. Amen. Lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes. This morning, my mission is to encourage you. Stop looking downward. Amen. 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 Stop looking at your insecurities. Come on, brother. Stop looking at your weaknesses. Come on. Stop looking at your inadequacies. Stop looking at the challenges. I say to you, lift up your eyes. Amen. Stop looking at the wounds that others have inflicted on you. Yes. I say to you, lift up your eyes. Amen. Stop looking at the mountains that may surround you. Amen. I say to you, lift up your eyes. Amen. Praise the Lord. For that is where your help comes from. That is where my help comes from. That is the only way that we can live a successful and victorious Christian life. Amen. 
When we are constantly lifting up our eyes to Jehovah. Thank you, Lord. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 2, G, the, the Bible says, looking unto Jesus. The author and the finisher of our faith. Glory. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Amen. Praise the Lord. He could have looked at the cross, but he lifted up his eyes. Yes. Yes. He endured the shame. He could have been looking at the shame, but he lifted up his eyes. Thank you, Jesus. And he is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. This morning, you have to lift up your eyes. Amen. You have to focus your eyes on Jesus. Amen. You must, as a matter of necessity, if you are going to fulfill God's plan for your life, you must fix your eyes on Jesus. Amen. I must fix my eyes on Jesus. Yes, Lord. We're going to share three reasons today why it is important, or three things, excuse me, that we should focus on today. Amen. And then we're going to pray and we're going to be done. And I believe that the power of God will transform your life. I believe that you will never remain the same. Amen. Three things that we have to focus on. We're talking about lifting our eyes, lifting up our eyes, fixing our eyes on Jesus. The first thing that we are to focus on, we see in the account of the story from the verse that I read preceding the message. John chapter 4 verse 35. In John chapter 4 verse 21, Through verse 35, we see the story of a woman called the Samaritan woman. Mm -hmm. Jesus is going to Galilee and he says he must pass through Samaria. And so we pick up the story in verse 21. Jesus said unto her, woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh and now he is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. The woman saith unto him, I know, that the, I know that Messiah is coming, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus saith unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Yes. Amen. Say ye, say not ye, there are yet four months. Hmm. And then come at harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes mm -hmm. and look unto the fields, for they are white already to harvest. Can we read verse 36 as well? Do we have verse 36? Yeah. The disciples begin to say to Jesus, did somebody bring him meat that we're not aware of? Did somebody bring him food that we're not aware of? The first thing that we are to focus on is that we are to focus on the harvest. Amen. 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 We are to focus on the harvest. See, in this story, Jesus is hungry, he's tired, yeah. and he sits down at a well, and the disciples go off to buy food in the village. Yes. And when they go off, this woman comes to the well, and Jesus begins to engage with her. And when the disciples come back, they are focused on the food. Jesus is focused on seeing people come into the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Jesus is focused on having the spiritual needs of the people met. Yes, Lord. But the disciples are focused on physical things. All right. So Jesus says to them in verse 35, lift up your eyes. Take your eyes off of the mundane. Mm -hmm. Take your eyes off of the physical things. It's as if Jesus is saying to them, you should be more concerned about what God is concerned about. Well, Amen. 
I'll say it a different way. You should be most concerned about what God is concerned about. Amen. Come on, preacher. Come on. Lift up your eyes. See what God is doing. God is moving in the nations. God is moving in the Pacific Northwest. Amen. God is moving in Bellevue. Amen. Don't focus your eyes on the things of this world. Amen. The things of this world are important. Make no mistake. Praise the Lord. Don't get caught up in the pettiness. Don't get caught up in the issues. Mm -hmm. Focus on the harvest. Break it down. Don't get focused on your needs to the detriment of what is most important. Amen. God's kingdom is most important. Amen. God's kingdom is important to him. Amen. Come on, brother. God's kingdom is his priority. Amen. I will build my church. Amen. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Amen. Hallelujah. God is focused on his kingdom. Amen. And we should be focused on his kingdom. Amen. Amen. Lift up your eyes, church, and let us focus on the harvest. Amen. Let us focus on what God is doing. Let's focus on what God prioritizes. And when we do this, then God promises in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Yes. He promises that when we are concerned about his kingdom, then what is happening in our lives will be his concern. Amen. Yes, Lord. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all these other things will be added yes. unto you. Yes. Come on, church, lift up your eyes. Praise the Lord. Lift up your eyes. Praise the Lord. Lift up your eyes and focus on the harvest. Yes. Amen. Lift up your eyes and focus on what God is doing. Don't be troubled by the issues of life. Amen. Focus on the harvest. Amen. 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 When you make God's kingdom your priority, God will make your life his priority. Amen. 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 When you fight God's battles, God will fight your battles. Amen. 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 Lift up your eyes. The second thing we're to focus on is focus on God's calling on your life. Amen. Focus on God's calling on your life. In the book of Acts chapter 9 verse 15, we see these words. God says to a man called Ananias. Ananias is called to go and pray for Paul. Oh, okay. Pray. And God says to Ananias, go. This man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles. Amen. And their kings. And to the people of Israel. That is God's destiny. In that verse, we see the Apostle Paul's mission statement. God says, I have what? Called him. Uh -huh. He is my chosen instrument yes. to proclaim my name to the Gentiles. The second thing we have to focus on as we lift up our eyes is focus on God's call upon your life. Praise the Lord. <laughs> There is a specific call of God upon your life. Amen. Amen. There is a specific anointing for which God has made you his child. Amen. How do we fulfill, how do we live a victorious Christian life? It is to focus on what God has called you to do. Amen. 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 Focus on your calling. Amen. 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 Your calling is not my calling. Amen. Focus on what? Your calling. By the time we get to the book of Acts chapter 27, we see a story unfolding. We're going to read from Acts chapter 27 verse 21. Acts chapter 27 verse 21. At this point now, Paul is on a ship uh -huh. that is sailing to Rome. Yes. Verse 21 says, But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them. The ship gets entangled in a violent storm. Mm. Violent storm, and by this point, scripture says that the hearts of the men have failed them. Mm -hmm. And Paul says unto them, But after long abstinence, he stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you sh ye should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from Crete, and to have gained this harm and loss. Yes. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer. Amen. For there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. Praise the Lord. For there stood by me this night 
The angel of God whose I am and whom I serve. Amen. Say, fear not, Paul. Thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Amen. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer. Amen. For I believe God yes. that it shall be even as it was told me. Amen. The way we live a victorious Christian life is we lift our eyes and we focus on God's calling upon our lives. You see, Paul could not be killed in that shipwreck. God, Paul could not be consumed by that storm. Amen. The storm could not overtake him. Why? Because there was a call of God upon his life. And so Paul could declare and stand up boldly where men, seasoned sailors, were afraid. Paul could boldly stand up and declare. Yes. An angel of God appeared to me. Yes, thank you. Lord. An angel of God whom I serve and whose I am. When we focus on God's call upon our lives, we will live a victorious Christian life. When you are faced with any difficulty, hardship, lift up your eyes and remember the call of God upon your life. Amen. Has God given you an assignment? Has God given you a mission? Yes. See, this is why it is important to be in God's service. Amen. Amen. This is why it's important to be a worker in God's vineyard. Amen. Amen. Because when you receive the call of God upon your life, God is committed to you fulfilling that plan. God is committed to you fulfilling the destiny that he has prepared for you. The enemy is off limits as regards your destiny. The Bible says God is not a man that he should lie. No, it's in his own a man that he should repent. When God calls you and you are sure that God calls you, continue to lift up your eyes. Amen. Continue to focus on that vision. No matter what comes against you, lift up your eyes. Ah, Lord, I remember you said, Lord, that you are going to use me to reach yeah. this nation. Yes, Lord. When that storm came, later on in this story, we see that a viper attacked itself to Saul's hands. Yes. Paul could confidently say, this viper is not in line with God's call upon my life. Yes, right. Paul could confidently say, how am I going to stand before Caesar? If this viper takes me down. See, Paul could have solid ground on which to stand. Today I want to encourage you, if you have not discovered God's calling upon your life, it is important that you discover it. If you are not serving in the vineyard, it is very important that you discover God's call upon your life. God did not make you a Christian to sit on the sidelines. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. God did not save my soul for me to sit on the sidelines. Amen. God has a call upon your life. God has a call upon my life. Amen. The sooner we discover God's call upon our lives, the sooner we begin to walk towards them. Amen. 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 The sooner we begin to achieve them. If you discover God's call upon your life when you are 70, my goodness, how are you going to fulfill it? Amen. Amen. Today I say, lift up your eyes and discover God's calling upon your life. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. And the final reason, the final thing that we're to focus on as we lift up our eyes is we're to focus on God's promises. Amen. 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 In the book of 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 4, we read, By his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. Amen. We have received all of this by coming to know him, the one who called us to himself, by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. 
These are the promises that enable you to share His divine nature and to escape the world's corruption that is caused by our human desires. Many times we get the impression that God is on, on, on caring for us. That God's love for us is wavering. That God doesn't care about the situation that we're in. That God is like a deadbeat dad who abandons his children. No. But I tell you today, that is not the case. Amen. Our God is caring. Our God is loving. Amen. That is a lie of the enemy. It is a lie sent from the pit of hell to cause you to lose focus on God. But God says through Peter, I have given you great and precious promises. So that you can partake of the divine nature. When the enemy wants to lie to you and cause you to give in to your human desires, God says, no, there is a promise. Amen. There is a promise. There is a promise that you can stand upon. There is a promise that you can hold on to. There is a promise that you can hold God to. And as you hold him to his promises, the Bible says we escape. Excuse me, the Bible says we are partakers of his divine nature. We escape the corruption of the world that is caused through human desire. We Amen. escape human desires. Amen. The lie of the enemy is, is sent to discourage you mm -hmm. so that you live in sin. Yes. So that you give in to your human nature. What is the human nature? A nature of sin. Oh, God does not love me. Oh, God has abandoned on me. Isn't that what he said to Eve? Yes. Has God indeed said? And then he told Eve, God knows that the day you eat this, he sowed poison into Eve's heart. Eve began to question, wow, why, why would God do this? Maybe God is holding back something from me. Why has that promotion not come? Oh, because God doesn't love you. Why am I going through all these challenges? Because God is not with you. The lies of the enemy. Amen. God says by his promises. Amen. As you focus on his promises. Amen. You can partake of his divine nature. Amen. As I focus on his promises. I can escape the corruption. I can escape the corruption of ungodly human desires. Well... Today, I want you to know you have a choice to make. Every man, every woman has a choice to make. Yes. Amen. You can focus on your challenges. You can focus on your problems. Amen. Or you can claim God's promises. Amen. Either way, the promises are there. Amen. Either way, the promises are true. Either way, the promises stand. But you have a choice to make. The Bible says, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Now you can stand on his promise. Or you can continue to live in sin. Amen. Amen. Lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes from the mundane. Lift up your eyes from the ordinary. Lift up your eyes to Jehovah. Lift up your eyes because God has a plan for your life. Amen. Lift up your eyes because God has a destiny for you. Amen. Lift up your eyes because God is not through with you. Amen. Lift up your eyes because God means business for you. Amen. He has business for you. Amen. He has business for your family. Amen. But you must lift up your eyes. I must lift up my eyes. I must refuse to be intimidated. By the lies of the enemy. Thank you. Amen. 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 I must refuse to be intimidated. I must refuse to be afraid. I must refuse to question God. 
I must trust in him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The story of Job just dropped in my mind. Yes. Job focused. Mm -hmm. Focused on God. Yes, he did. He focused on the promises of God. Amen. He focused on his God. The enemy's aim was to distract Job. Was to cause him to sin. Amen. Was to cause him to curse God and die. Yes. But Job focused his eyes. Job was able to lift up his eyes. Yes. He lifted up his eyes above the people that came against him. Amen. 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 People that cloaked in spirituality. Uh. Job lift up his eyes. Amen. I want to challenge you today. Lift up your eyes. God has a call upon your life. Amen. Amen. God wants to use you for his kingdom. Amen. Amen. And God has great and wonderful promises Praise for you. Yes. Amen. But we must continually lift up our eyes. We must continually lift up our eyes. We must continually lift up our eyes. As we close today, I want to ask you this question. What are the mundane or false things? As I invite Brother Daniel to play for us, we're going to come before our God. What are the mundane or the false things? What are the lies that the enemy has told you to keep you from the glorious destiny that God has for you? I want you to identify them today. What are the lies? The difficulties, the challenges, the problems, the failures, the fears, the hopelessness, the tests that the enemy has brought your way. And his goal is single-minded. He wants to keep you from the glorious destiny that God has for you. Today I want to encourage you. Focus your eyes on the vision that the Almighty God has given to you. Amen. He's ever waiting to lead us to glory. Yes. But we must lift up our eyes. Lift up your eyes and be encouraged in Him today. Amen. Lift up your eyes and know that God will fulfill every plan and every promise that He has made unto us. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Would you rise today to your feet as we pray? Let's rise to our feet. Let's rise to our feet. I want you to begin to see that vision. I want you to begin to see that glorious destiny. To begin to see the calling of God upon your life. And maybe you, you haven't received it. Then I want you today to ask, Lord, give me a vision of your plan for my life. Not my plan. Not what I have been chasing. If what you have been chasing is not what God wants for you, say, God, give me a vision of your call upon my life. Maybe you're here today and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Then that's the starting point. I want you today to say, Lord, I want to know Jesus as my Lord. You cannot live a victorious life. If your eyes are not lifted up and focused on Jesus. Come on, talk to him today. Talk to him. Talk to him. Father, Lord, help me. Help me. Help me, oh God. I see the call of God upon my life. I see your promises. I see your hand upon my life. I see what you want to do. Lord, show me. Show me, show me, show me all that you want to do through me.
cry out to your God this afternoon. <laughs> Jesus, I lift my eyes up to you today. I lift my eyes up to you today. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, give me a vision. Clarity of vision. Keenness of mind. I lift my eyes up to you today. My help, my help. 